welcome my dear students today's topic is kelly xylem so in your screen a nice diagram is given it is the kelly xylem tree stump and it is placed at the entrance of east central university okama of universe usa so this plant it was first discovered by john fitz in 1913 at goose creek south jersey okama as the tree trunk and the species was kelizylon whiteanum several other members of this mid late devonian petrified fossil was found worldwide as fragments of branches and twigs also few species are mentioned here kelizylon becki it is obtained from usa kelizylon huronensis it was discovered from canada kelizylon jeleski from morocco the petrified fossilized trunk is 1.5 meter to 1.8 meter in diameter and 20 meter in length and interestingly the other species that is the moroccan one it is 10 cm wide stem fragment now we are moving to the next page prior to 1960 it was believed that kelizylon was a member of coniferous gymnosperm that is the stem genus it was believed that it is a fossilized gymnosperm and archaeopteris was a pteridophyta archaeopteris is a front like structure or leaf like structure and it has some pteridophytian character so it was believed that archaeopteris that is the leaf is from pteridophyta and the stem is from kelizylon but this concept was changed when beek made an organic connection between these two form genus and reconstructed the plant in 1962 in which the stem that is the kelizylon was conifer like and the leaf that is frond or archaeopteris was fern like interestingly a plant having two different characters its stem is as like as a conifer whereas the leaf characterize the properties of pteridophyta and from that day a new class pro gymnosperm of cedar was established in the plant kingdom and considered that this class was the connecting link between the class pteridophyta and the class gymnosperm so in 1962 a new class pro gymnosperm of cedar was established and the beginning was the reconstruction of the archaeopteris tree the class progymnosperm of cedar consists of three orders enirophytes archaeopteridals and protopytes now we are moving to the next page a nice diagram is given it is none other than archaeopteris tree a reconstructed tree and it was drawn after big 1962 Big 1971 opined that Archaeopteris was the ancestor of the gymnosperms, as both of them, that is the gymnosperm and Archaeopteris, both of them possesses pycnozylic wood and eustily in stem anatomy. And the line of evolution is as follows: from the bottom, please you see, the ancestor is xylotime-like structure. Cytotime is a member of Pteridophyta, so it is the ancestor. It has been evolved to Enurophytes, 
then immunophytals again evolved to archaeopteridals and cycadophytes. Archaeopteridals later on evolved to coniferophytes. So this is the line of evolution. That is, from this line it is clear that gymnosperm have been evolved from pteridophyta through pro gymnosperm oxida. In the next page, we will discuss about the stem anatomy. That is the anatomy of Chalizylon. So nice diagram is given here. Look at this diagram. In the petrified fossil structure of Chalizylon, bark, cortex, cambium, and primary phloem was not well preserved. So in the diagram, these particular structures are absent. The anatomy of Chalizylon macellanta is described from the center to the periphery. So look at the diagram. At the center it is pith. It is surrounded by primary xylem and which is again surrounded by secondary xylem. Then it is surrounded by wood cylinder having few leaf traces, branch traces and three leaf bases. Next, in the next page, the first point is pith. A well-defined central pith is present in the TS of Chalizylon. It is parenchymatous in nature and the parenchyma are isodiametric at the center and remaining, that is the peripheral parenchyma are polygonal. The second point, the pith is surrounded by primary xylem and this primary xylem ring is of mesarch type with nine ribs. Here the ribs are identified or marked as R1, R2 up to R9. Leaf traces and the branch traces drivers from these xylem ribs. From these nine ribs, leaf traces and the branch traces drivers. Each leaf trace divided into two before their entry in a leaf and then again divide to give typical dichotomous venation. Two distinct branch traces are observed in the wood cylinder. At the same time, leaf traces are seen in primary xylem secondary xylem, wood cylinder and in the leaf bases. Now we are moving to the next page that is page number 6. The point is secondary xylem. There may or may not be a single parenchyma in between primary and abundant secondary xylem. The xylem, secondary xylem is abundant. There may be or may not be a parenchyma layer in between the primary and secondary xylem. That is the secondary xylem encircles the or surrounds the primary xylem. And there may or may not be a parenchyma layer in between these two types of xylem. The secondary xylem is compactly arranged around the primary xylem and also made the reef like structures. Here the rib like structures are marked as R prime, R, R prime 1 to R prime 9. Tracheids, vascular parenchyma rays and occasionally ray tracheids are the component of the secondary xylem. The tracheids exhibit circular border pits, that is the pits are bordered at the tracheids. On the radial walls, the late wood pits occur on the tangential wall also. So, since it is termed as late wood, we may say about the growth ring. The growth ring may be inconspicuous or absent. But in Chalizylon jeleski, it is clear. The vascular rays may be uni, bi or multiseriate 
and it depends upon the species and its length or height is also variable 2 cells to 11 cells. Now, in the next page, in the diagram, three distinct leaf bases are observed. These are yellow colored. For your convenience, I make them yellow. Leaf base 1, leaf base 2 and leaf base 3 having leaf traces. So, three distinct leaf bases with leaf traces are located adjacent to the wood cylinder. In Calizylon jeleski, secondary phloem is made up of fibers, sclerides, rays, axial parenchyma and putative sieve tubes. This point is about the components of the secondary xylem. Okay, it is made up of the, the members are fibers, sclerides, rays, axial parenchyma and sieve tubes. So, the presence of secondary phloem in this particular species supports the close affinity of Archaeopteridian progymnosperma with seed plants. This Moroccan species proved that they have an affinity to the seed plants. That is, this particular species proved that progymnosperma of seeda has affinity to the seed plants. Moreover, the presence of pycnozylic wood with ray trachids and border pits on the radial walls show its conifer-like ancestor character and it was considered as an early representative of conifer clan. So, last point is discussed about the coniferous character of this particular stem structure. So, this stem structure proved that it have some conifer-like character and some seed plant-like characters. So, this one is about the stem anatomy of Calizylon, that is the form genus of Archaeopteris. Okay, hope this Today, again, this note will help you to study fossil gymnosperms, fossil teredophyta, and fossil progymnospermopsida. This is about progymnospermopsida archaeopteris. Thank you.